Hi everybody, this is Julia from the Macedon Public Library and today I have some people who are joining us and we're doing a reader's theater of Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream and um, none of us are professional actors or actresses um, <laughs> uh, and we all uh, just enjoy wordplay and theater. So here we go, we're doing act one, scene one, starting uh, with A Midsummer Night's Dream the scene is set in Athens and a wood not far from it. Now, fair Hippolyta, our nuptial hour draws on the pace. Four happy days bring in another moon. But oh, methinks her how slow this old moon wanes. She lingers my desire, like to a stepdame or a dowager, long withering out a young man's revenue. Four days will quickly steep themselves in night. Four nights will quickly dream away the time. And then the moon, like to a silver bow new bent in heaven, shall behold the night of our solemnities. Go, Philistrates, stir up the Athenian youth to merriment. Wake the pert and nimble spirit of mirth. Turn melancholy forth to funerals. The pale companion is not for our part. Hippolyta, I wooed thee with my sword, and mm -hmm. won thy love, doing thee injuries. But I will wed thee in another key, with pomp, with triumph, and with reveling. <laughs> Aegis enters with daughter Hermia. Happy be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegis. What's the news with thee? Full of vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter Hermia. Stand forth, Demetrius, my noble lord. This man hath my consent to marry her. Stand forth, Lysander, and my gracious duke. This man had witched the bottom of my child. Thou, thou, Lysander, thou hast given her rhymes and interchanged love tokens with my child. Thou hast by moonlight at her window sung with feigning voice verses of feigning love and stolen the impression of her fantasy with bracelets of thy hair, rings, gods, conceits. Knacks, trifles, nosegays, sweetmeats, messengers of strong prevalent in unhardened youth. Oh, sorry, strong prevalent in unhardened youth. With cunning hast thou filched my daughter's heart turned her obedience, which is due to me, to stubborn harshness, and my gracious duke, be it so, she will not hear before your grace. Consent to marry with Demetrius. I beg the ancient privilege of Athens, as she is mine, I may dispose of her, which shall be either to, his gentle, to this gentleman or to her death, according to our law, immediately provided in that case. Oh. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair maid. To you, your father should be as a god, one that composed your beauties, yea, and one to whom you are but as a form in wax, by him imprinted and within his power to leave the figure or disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. In himself, he is. But in this kind, wanting your father's voice, the other must be held the worthier. I would my father looked, but with my eyes. Rather, your eyes must with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me. I know not by what power I am made bold nor how it may concern my modesty in such a presence here to plead my thought. But I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me in this case if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Hmm. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of men. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires. 
know of your youth, examine well your blood. Whether if you yield not to your father's choice, you can endure the livery of a nun. For I, to be in shady cloister muse, to live a barren sister all your life, chanting faint hymns to the cold, fruitless moon. Mm, thrice blessed they that master so their blood to undergo such maiden pilgrimage. But earthly happier is the rose distilled than that which withering on the virgin thorn grows, lives, and dies in a single blessedness. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord, ere I will yield my virgin patent up unto his lordship, whose unwished yoke my soul consents not to give sovereignty. Take time to pause. And by the next new moon, the sealing day, twixt my love and me, for everlasting bond of fellowship, upon that day, either prepare to die for disobedience to your father's will, or else to wed Demetrius, as he would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I, austerity and single life. Now, now we've come to the difficult part because we don't have a Demetrius. Anybody want to step up? Sure, I'll be Demetrius for now. Relent, sweet Hermia, and Lysander yield thy crazed title to my certain right. You have her father's love, Demetrius. Let me have Hermia's. Do you marry him? Scornful Lysander, true he hath my love, and what is mine, my love shall render him. And she is mine, and all my right of her, I do estate unto Demetrius. I am, my lord, as well derived as he, as well possessed. My love is more than his. My fortune in every way as fairly ranked, if not with vantage as Demetrius. And which is more than all these boasts can be, I am beloved of beauteous Hermia. Why should I not then prosecute my right? Demetrius, I'll avouch it to his head, made love to Nadar's daughter Helena, and won her soul, and she, sweet lady, dotes, devoutly dotes, dotes in idolatry upon this spotted and inconsistent man. Hmm. I must confess that I have heard so much, and with Demetrius thought to have spoke thereof, but being overfull of self-affairs, my mind did lose it. But Demetrius, come, come Aegis, you shall go with me. I shall have some private schooling for you both. For you, fair Hermia, look, you arm yourself to fit your fancies to your father's will, or else the law of Athens yields you up, which by no means we may extenuate to death or to a vow of single life. Come, um, my Hippolyta, what cheer, my love? Demetrius and Aegis, go along. I must employ you in some business against our nuptial and confer with you of something nearly that concerns yourselves. With duty and desire, we follow you. Aegis, Hippolyta, Aegis, Demetrius, and train exit. How now, my love, why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses that do fade so fast? Be like, like for want of rain. Oh, that's Hermia, I'm sorry. <laughs> Be like for want of rain, which I could well beteem them from the tempest of my eyes. Ah me, for aught that I could ever read could e'er hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood. Oh, cross. Too high to be enthralled to low. Or else misgaffed in respect of years. Oh, spite! Too old to be engaged to young. Or else it stood upon the choice of friends. Oh, hell! To choose love by another's eye. 
or if there was sympathy in choice, war, death, or sickness did lay siege to it, making it momentary as a sound, swift as a shadow, short as any dream, brief as the lightning and the coiled night, that in a spleen unfolds both heaven and earth, and ere a man hath power to say, Behold, the jaws of darkness do devour it up, so quick bright things come to confusion. If then true lovers have ever crossed, it stands as an edict in destiny. Then let us teach our trial patience, because it is a customary cross, as due to love as thoughts and dreams and sighs, wishes and tears, poor fancies followers. A good persuasion. Therefore hear me, Hermia. I have a widow aunt, a dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child, from Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, I may marry thee, and to that place the sharp Athenian law cannot pursue us. If thou lovest me, then steal forth thy father's house tomorrow night, and in the wood, a league without the town, where I did meet thee once with Helena, to do observance of a morn on May. There I will stay for thee. Oh, my good Lysander! I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, by his best arrow, with the golden head, by the simplicity of Venus's doves, by that which knitteth souls and prospers love, and by the fire which burned the Carthage queen when the false Trojan under sail was seen, by all the vows that ever men have broke, in numbers more than women spoke, in that same place thou hast appointed me, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised love. Look, here comes Helena. God speed, fair Helena, wither away. Oh, we don't have a. <laughs> I'll be Helena. All right. <laughs> Call you me fair? That fair again, unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair. Your eyes are load stars and your tongue's sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. When wheat is green, when hawthorn buds appear, sickness is catching. Oh, were favor so, yours would I catch, fair Hermia, ere I go. Your ear catch your voice, my eye your eye. My tongue could catch your tongue's sweet melody, were the world mine. Demetrius being baited, the rest I'd give to you, translated. Oh, teach me how you look, and with what art you sway the motion of Demetrius's heart. I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Oh, that your frowns would teach my smiles such skill. I give him curses, yet he gives me love. Oh, that my prayers could such affection move. The more I hate, the more he follows me. The more I love, the more he hateth me. His folly, Helena, is no fault of mine. None but your beauty. Would that fault were mine. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Before the time I did see, I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then, what graces in my love do dwell that he hath turned to heaven unto hell? Helena, to you our minds we will unfold. Tomorrow night, when Phoebe doth behold her silver visage in the watery glass, decking with liquid pearl the bladed grass, a time that lovers' flights doth still conceal, through Athens' gates we have devised to steal. <gasps> and in the wood, where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet, and thence from Athens turn away our eyes to seek new friends and stranger companies. Farewell, sweet, sweet playfellow, pray thou for us, and Good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander, we must starve our sight from lover's food till tomorrow, till morrow deep midnight. I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius, dote on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens I am thought as fair as she. But what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know, as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I admiring of his qualities. Things base and vile, holding no quantity, 
love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind, and therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. Nor hath love's mind any judgment taste. Wings and no eyes figure on heedy haste, and therefore is love said to be a child, because in choice he is so oft beguiled. As waggish boys in game themselves forswear, so the boy love is perjured everywhere. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermiazine, he sailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this tale some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. Gilly, leave it. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight, then to the wood. Will he tomorrow night pursue her? And for this intelligence, I have, where'd it go? Sorry. <laughs> you got the intro board. Sorry, <laughs> that will be nice. <laughs> uh, tell him of her then to the wood, will he tomorrow night pursue her? And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither, and back again. That's the end of Act One, Scene One. So how are we doing? Doing great. <laughs> Shall we okay. do another scene? Certainly. All right. Sure. So now we're going to be in the same uh, same theme, a room in a cottage. We have new characters. Any preferences? <laughs> Nick wants bottom. No, so I, I think, think actually. Uh, I think I think Todd makes a grand bottom. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> Sh shall I pause Are the recording? Are you up for it? Absolutely. Okay. okay. Anybody want snug? I have no preference. I don't have a whole preference. I can do anything. Sue, you or me? I'll do snug. Hey. All right. I'll take flute. You know, who wants to be Peter Quince? I can be Quince. It's fine. Oh, okay. Lovely. Okay, right. All right. So who did, I'm sorry, Nick, did you have a preference? I'll have flute. All right. And then how about, I don't think either Snout or Starveling have much, so I'll do both. Lovely. All right. Okay. Continuing on. I'm sorry, wait, I'm flute or Snout? No, I'm flute. You're snug. You're, you're snug. Nick is flute. Todd is bottom. I'm Quince. Okay. So. I'm snug. And Julia yeah. is doing snout and starveling. starveling. Unless somebody else would like to take one of them. Okay. All right. Okay. Is all our company here? You were best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit, though all Athens, to play in our interlude before the Duke and the Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quince, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors, and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you, and a merry. Now, good Peter Quince, Call forth your actors by the scroll. Masters, spread yourselves. And sir, as I call you, Nick Bottom, the weaver. Ready. Name what part I am for and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus, a lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself, most gallant for love. That will ask some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will condole in some measure. To the rest, that my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Ericles rarely, or a part to tear a, to tear a cat in, to make all split. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison's gates, and Phidus' car shall shine from afar and make and mar the foolish fates. This was lofty. Now, name the rest of the players. There, this is er Ericles' vein and a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. 
Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. Uh, what is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Nay, Faith, let me not play a woman. I have a beard coming. <laughs> That's all one. You shall play it in a mask, and you may speak as small as you will. And I may hide my f and I may hide my face. Let me play Thisbe too. <laughs> I'll speak in a monstrous little voice. Thisbe, Thisbe. Ah, oh, Pyramus, my lover dear, thy Thisbe dear, and lady dear. <laughs> no, no, you must play Pyramus, and flute you Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starling, the tailor. Here, Peter Quinn. Robin Starling, you must pay, play Thisbe's mother, Tom Snout, the tinker. Let's meet, no, now, yes, oh. Here, Peter Quinn's. <laughs> <laughs> you, Pyramus's father, myself, Thisbe's father, Snug, the joiner, you, the lion's part, and I hope here is a play fitted. Have, have you the lion's part written? Pray you, if it be, give it me, for I am slow of study. Rawr. You may do it extempore, for it is nothing but roaring. Roar! Let me play the lion too. I will roar that I will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, let him roar again, let him roar again. And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies, that they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That would hang us all. I grant you, friends, if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so, and I will roar you as gently as any suckling dove. I will roar you twer any nightingale. You can play no part but Pyramus, for Pyramus is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one shall see in a summer's day, a most lovely gentleman like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. What beard were I best to play it in? Why, what you will. I will discharge it in either your straw-colored beard, your orange tawny beard, your purple and grain beard, or your French crown yellow colored beard, your perfect yellow. Some of your French crowns have no hair at all, and then you will play bareface. But, masters, here are your parts, and I am to entreat you, request you, and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the palace wood, a mile without the town, by moonlight. There will, there will we rehearse, for if we meet in the city, we shall be dogged with company, and our devices known. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of properties, such as our play once. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet, and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. At the Duke's Oak we meet. Enough, hold or cut bowstrings. <laughs> That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> I think the puppy part was the best. <laughs> squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> Bless her. <laughs> it, it adds that working from home feel, which is always nice. Yes. <laughs> 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 of Todd's apple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are we... Are we, are we feeling good with that? Do you guys want to keep going? Do you want to do this again next week? Or uh, just whatever. I mean, it, it is 4.35 now. I don't know what your schedules are like. I could keep going for a little while. Absolutely. All right. All right. And, and you know, it's so crazy, but it really is better out loud than trying to just read it on the page. It really yeah. is. Better out than in. Okay, Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> well, there
it was Hagrid. <laughs> oh, I lost my place. Okay. Um, so for, let me mention it here. I am reading this online through, um, through Libby, which is, I'm doing a little plug here for the library. Um, Libby is the application that is used by OverDrive uh, through mm -hmm. our library system. Many library systems use it. I'm um, using Libby also. I'm sorry, you're using Libby? Yeah. Yep. And uh, so I know right now there's not everything from, not all of Shakespeare's plays, uh, but many of them are out there. Um, as always available, because um, of course it's out of copyright, and um, so that any, any number of people can have it checked out, and you can keep renewing it as long as you like. Um, so if you don't have a copy, uh, and you want to follow along, or you want to try this at, a, at another time, um, I went through and I picked, of all the ones that were currently available, I thought Midsummer Night's Dream is just a fun, it's a fun show. Um, so that's what we're starting with that. So there you go, plug for Al to go, and Libby. And overdrive. All right, so now act two, we're starting. Scene one is in a wood near Athens. Over the stage, as it were, has been set. Um, puck. Now, yeah. Puck over on along to Barry. Yes, and Demetrius and Helena come in. So, who wants to be Puck? That's got to be Nick, right? I got be. my Puck hood on. All okay. right. I'll read Oberon. Okay. Right, we'll have Oberon and his train and Titania and her train. I don't recall if any of the people in the train read. I don't. There is a generic fairy. Right. I'll, so. I'll take the generic fairy. Okay. And we needed Demetrius. Yes, and we needed Demetrius as I well as the Titania. Oh, I was Demetrius before. Oh. I can continue. Okay. okay. Well, we have, later on, we have Demetrius and Helena. Weren't you also Helena? Yes. No, I was Hippolyta, I thought. No, but Julia you were also Helena. Helena. Really was Helena? Mm -hmm. No, I was doing Hermia. Not that it matters. Okay, yeah. No, don't you remember the Helena, the, the back and forth with the... Yeah, Helena is the one who's being spurred. Oh, right, so right. You were yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, so yes. I will stay with Helena then and not okay. you, Demetrius. Okay, um, I'll be Demetrius, or, so who, Brian? <laughs> How about, I be, I'll be Titania, and you can be Demetrius, Brian. Okay. I don't, unless you really want to be Titania. No, I could, I could be Titania. But, you know. <laughs> I've got the range. Let me play all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're about to <laughs> All right, so Brian, you're going to be Demetrius. Okay. And here we go. Shall I read the, the stage direction? Certainly. Enter a Please. fairy. <laughs> yeah, I think yes. you should. All right. Enter a fairy at one door and Puck at the other. Who's my fairy? Oh. Um, Puck goes first. Sue, Sue is going to be, but Puck, Puck talks first. Oh, sorry. How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through a bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through a flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the moon sphere. And I serve the fairy queen to do her orbs upon the green. The cowslips tall her pensioners be. In the gold coats, spots you see. These be rubies, fairy favors. In the freckles live their saviors. I must go seek some dewdrops here and hang a pearl in every cowslip's ear. Farewell, though lob of spirits, I'll be gone. Our queen and all her elves come here anon. Ah, the king doth keep his revels here tonight. Now take heed. The queen come not within his sight, for Oberon is passing fell and wrath, because that she, as her attendant, hath a lovely boy stolen from an Indian king. A lovely boy that she never had so sweet a changeling and jealous Oberon would have the child knight of his train to trace the forest wild. But she, her force, withholds the loved boy, crowns him with flowers and makes him all her joy. And now they never meet in grove or green by fountain clear or spangled starlight sheen, but they 
do swear. That's all their elves for fear. Creep into acorn cups and hide from them there. Either I mistake your shape and making quite, or else you are that shrewd and knavish sprite called Robin Goodfellow, are you not he, that frights the maidens of the villagery, skim milk and sometime labor in the quern, and bootless make the breathless housewife churn, mm -hmm. and sometime make the drink to bear no barm, mislead night wanderers laughing at their harm, <laughs> Those that hobgoblin call you and sweet puck, you do their work, and they shall have good luck. Are you not he? Thou speakest aright. <laughs> I am that merry wanderer of the night. I jest to Oberon and make him smile. When I a fat and bean-fed horse beguile, neighing in likeness of a filly foal, and sometimes lark I in the gossip's bowl, in very likeness of a roasted crab. And when she drinks, against her lips I bob, and on her withered dewlap pour the ale. <laughs> the wisest ants, telling the saddest tale, sometimes for three foot Stool mistake it me. Then slip I from her bum. Down topples she, and Taylor cries, and falls into a cough. <laughs> and then the whole choir hold their hips and laugh, and waxen in their mirth, and knees and sweat. A merrier hour was never wasted there. Much room, Mary. Here comes Oberon. Oh, and here, my mistress. Oh, would that he were gone. Ill met by moonlight, proud to time. What, jealous Oberon? Fairy, skip hence. I have forsworn his bed and company. Tarry, rash wanton. Am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady. But I know when thou hast stolen away from fairyland, and in the shape of corn sat all day playing on pipes of corn and Versing love to amorous Philida. Why art thou here, come from the farthest steep of India, but that, forsooth, the bouncing Amazon, your buskined mistress and your warrior love, to Theseus must be wedded, and you come to give their bed joy and prosperity. How canst thou thus for shame, Titania, glance at my credit with Hippolyta, knowing I thy love, knowing I know knowing I know thy love to Theseus. Didst not thou lead him through the glimmering night from Perigenia, whom he ravished, and make him with fair Agil break his faith with Ariadne and Antiopa? These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never since the middle summer spring met we on hill and dale, forest or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook or on the beached margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore, the winds piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which falling in the land hath every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continent. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain, the plowman lost his sweat, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and crows are fatted from the Murian, Murian flock. The nine men's uh -huh. morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes and the wanton green, for lack of tread, are undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No, no one is now with him or Carol blessed. Is everything okay? Okay. <laughs> Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air, that rheumatic diseases do abound, and throw this temperature we see, the seasons alter. Hoary-headed frosts fall in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old Hyam's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer bud is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter, 
change their wanton liveries, and the amazed world by their increase know, now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils come from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. Why should Titania cross her over on? I do but beg a little changing boy to be my henchman. Your heart at rest. The fairyland buys not the child of me. His mother was a votress of my order. And in the spiced Indian air by night, full often has she gossiped by my side and sat with me on Neptune's yellow sands, marking the embarked traders on the flood. When, he have, when we have laughed to see the sails conceive and grow big bellied with the wanton wind, which she with pretty and with swimming gait following, her womb then rich with my young squire, would imitate and sail upon the land to fetch me trifles and return again as from a voyage rich with merchandise. But she being mortal of that boy did die. And for her sake do I rear up her boy and for her sake, I will not part with him. How long within this wood intend you stay? Perchance till after Theseus's wedding day, if you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight revels, go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunt. Give me that boy and I will go with thee. Not for thy fairy kingdom. Fairies, away. We shall chide downright if I longer stay. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I torment thee for this injury. My gentle puck, come hither. Thou rememberest since once I sat upon a promontory and heard a mermaid on a doctor's back uttering such dulcet and harmonious breath that the rude sea grew civil at her song and certain stars shot madly from their steers to hear the sea maid's music. I remember. That very time I saw, but thou couldst not flying between the cold moon and the earth, Cupid, all armed, a certain aim he took at a fair vestal thrown by the vast and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as it should pierce a hundred thousand hearts. But I might see young Cupid's fiery shaft quenched in the chaste beams of the watery moon. And the imperial votress passed on in maiden meditation, fancy free, yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell it fell upon a little western flower before milk white now purple with love's wound and the maidens call it love in idleness fetch me that flower the herb i showed thee once the juice of it on sleeping eyelids laid will make man or woman madly dote upon the next live creature that it sees fetch me this herb and be thou here again ere the leviathan can swim a league I'll put a girdle round the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania while she is asleep and the drop the liquor of it in her eyes. The next thing then she waking looks upon, be it lion, bear, or wolf, or bull, on meddling monkey or busy ape, she shall pursue it with the soul of love. And ere I take this charm from off her sight, as I can take it with another herb, I'll render up her page to me. But who comes here? I am invisible, and I will overhear their conference. Enter Demetrius and Helena. I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and fair Hermia? One I'll slay, the other slayeth me. Thou toldst me, they were stolen unto this wood, and here am I, and wood within this wood, because I cannot meet my Hermia. Hence, get thee gone, and follow me no more. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is as true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I shall have no power to follow you. Do I entice you? Do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And even for that, do I love you the more? I am your spaniel. And Demetrius, the more you beat me, I will fawn on you. Use me but as your spaniel. Spurn me, 
Strike me, neglect me, lose me. Only give me leave, unworthy as I am, to follow you. What worser place can I beg in your love, and yet a place of high respect with me, than to be used as you use your dog? Gilly drop. Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit, for I am sick when I do look upon thee. And I am sick when I do not look upon you. You do impeach your modesty too much to leave the city and commit yourself into the hands of one that loves you not, to trust the opportunity of night and the ill counsel of a desert place, desert place, with the rich worth of your virginity. Your virtue is my privilege, for that it is not night when I do see your face. Therefore, I think I am not in the night, nor doth this wood lack worlds of company, for you in my respect are all the world. Then how can it be said I am alone when all the world is here to look on me? I'll run from thee and hide me in the brakes and leave thee to the mercy of wild beasts. The wildest hath not such a heart as you. Run where you will, the story shall be changed. Apollo flies, and Daphne holds the chase. The dove pursues the griffin. The mild hind makes speed to catch the tiger. Bootless speed when cowardice pursues and valor flies. I will not stay thy questions. Let me go, or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief in the wood. I, in the temple, in the town, the field, you do me mischief. Fie, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and were not made to woo. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare thee well, nymph. Ere he do leave this grove, thou shalt fly him, and he shall seek thy love. Hast thou the flower there? Welcome, wanderer. Oh, aye, there it is. I pray thee, give it me. I know a bank whereupon the wild thyme blows, where ox lips and the nodding violet grows, quite over canopied with luscious woodbine, with sweet musk roses and with eglantine, there sleeps Titania some time of the night, lulled in these flowers with dances and delight, and there the snake throws her enameled skin, weed wide enough to wrap a fairy in, and with the juice of this I'll streak her eyes and make her full of hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it and seek through this grove. A sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. Thou shalt know the man by the Athenian garments he hath on. Affect it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And look thou meet me ere the first cock crow. Puck, fear not. Oh, that's dialogue, I beg your pardon. Fear not, my lord, your servant shall do so. And we come to the end of the first scene. All right, it is almost five o'clock. So I think, is it, if it's okay, I would like to leave it there. Yep. Is that right? All right, so um, I think we should do this again and possibly invite others to see if they would join us. Wendy would. Wendy would, excellent. Um, is, this a, is this, how is this time frame? It, day of the week, time of the day? This works. Good for us. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you everyone for joining us live. And uh, thank you everyone for watching us recorded. And uh, if you are interested in joining us again, you can email us at macreg at owl.org. Um, and it's also will be on our website, macedonpubliclibrary.org. And uh, we hope to see you later. And everyone enjoy your words. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording. How do I do that? Stop recording. All right.